Good afternoon, everybody. May I welcome all of you to our celebration of the Eucharist today. Father Eamon joins with me in welcoming you. We welcome those two who are joining us online. We invite them to unite their prayers with us as we gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today is traditionally known as Good Shepherd Sunday. The scriptures speak to us of the rich image of Jesus as the shepherd who guards us. As we come to celebrate and rejoice in the presence of the Good Shepherd Jesus, we do so conscious of our need for healing and forgiveness. So we ask his gentle pardon. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I've greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We give glory and praise to God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Our Mass today is being offered for Katrina Coyne of Lake Hill and the deceased members of the Coyne family. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter stood up with the eleven and addressed the crowd in a loud voice. The whole house of Israel can be certain that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Hearing this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the apostles, what must we do, brothers? You must repent, Peter answered, and every one of you must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise that was made is for you and your children, and for all those who are far away, for all those whom the Lord our God will call to himself. He spoke to them for a long time using many arguments, and he urged them, save yourselves from this perverse generation. They were convinced by his arguments and they accepted what he said and were baptized. 
That very day, about 3,000 were added to their number. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from the first letter of St. Peter. The merit in the sight of God is in bearing punishment patiently when you are punished after doing your duty. This, in fact, is what you are called to do because Christ suffered for you and left an example for you to follow the way he took he had done nothing wrong, and there had been no perjury in his mouth. He was insulted and did not retaliate with insults. When he was tortured, he made no threats, but put his trust in the righteous judge. He was bearing our faults in his own body on the cross, so that we might doubt, die to our faults and live for holiness. Through his wounds, you have been healed. You had gone astray like sheep, but now you have come back to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Shepherd says the Lord. 
Almighty God, which my heart to my lips, and I worthily proclaim your gospel. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I tell you most solemnly, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold through the gate, but gets in some other way, is a thief and a brigand. The one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the flock. The gatekeeper lets him in. The sheep hear his voice. One by one, he calls his own sheep and leads them out. Then, he has, when he has brought out his flock, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow because they know his voice. They never follow a shepherd or a stranger, but run away from him they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Jesus told them this parable, but they failed to understand what he meant by telling it to them. So Jesus spoke to them again. I tell you most solemnly, I am the gate of the sheepfold. All others who have come are thieves and brigands, but the sheep took no, no notice of them. I am the gate. Anyone who enters through me will be safe. He will go freely in and out and be sure of finding pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come so that they may have life and have it to the full. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus Christ. I grew up in the center of a city. For most of my life, I was very much a city boy. And so when I came to read the scriptures, some of the subtlety of what Jesus was speaking about when he often used references that were related to rural life, they were kind of lost on me and they had to be explained to me. I remember one time being particularly challenged as a young priest I was giving a mission up in the glens of Antrim, and the time and date of the mission had been changed. The priest wrote to me because of the lambing season. And when I got there one day, I was driving back with the parish priest from visiting some of the sick and housebound, and he turned to me and he said, would you like to meet a shepherd? And I have to be honest, it wasn't the most urgent need I felt but I thought it would be a bit impolite to say no, so I thought I'd better say yes. We pulled up outside this little cottage, and he pushed the door open and more or less pushed me in, and sitting by the fire was a small little wizened man who looked very startled to find me in his kitchen, and I was as uncomfortable with him for a moment. And we began a little conversation which was tentative at first, but then we kind of clicked and we began to talk about different things. And then he told me about his life on the mountain and how he was now crippled with arthritis and so on. And then he leant over and he whispered to me sort of, and he said, Father, do you read the Bible? So I said, well, I do, yeah. Do you? No, he said, I'm not great at the reading, but there are some very strange things in it. I said, are there? Yeah, he said. He said, I was in the church recently and the priest read out a part of the gospel. And he said, in the gospel, a man would leave 99 sheep to go look for one. I said, that's right. He said, that's the most stupid thing I ever heard. Well, I was a bit out of my depth. I, I didn't really have a great answer for a while. And I said, well, what do you mean? Oh, he said, sure, if I went looking for the one, when I'd come back the 99 would be gone. And I really, I was a bit stunned. And then, some way through the grace of God, I think at that particular moment, I got to understand truly what a good shepherd was. 
I said, do you think that's a crazy thing to do? And he said, I do. And I said, maybe that's the point of Jesus' story, that it's a crazy love that he has. It's not a logical love. It's an extraordinary love. I came, he says, that you may have life and have it to the full. And for the first time ever, it kind of really dawned on me what it was to have Jesus as a good shepherd. St. Peter's invitation to those who are listening to him this morning is a very radical one. It has a great effect. And you notice what it says. It says, they were cut to the heart. They were really struck by what he was saying. And what he was saying was, look, I'm inviting you to think differently, to think differently from the way you used to think. And he uses a word called metanoia. That's the word he uses for repentance in Greek. We all know what paranoia means. It's closed, it's narrow, it's very personally focused. But metanoia is that invitation to think beyond the ordinary, to kind of get rid of our closed thinking and to experience the generous heart and the generous mind of God. And the effect of Peter's words were extraordinary. As it says, they were cut to the heart. And what happened was they began to be people who were steeped in the intimacy that comes from living securely in the hand of God. We had that beautiful psalm sung for us this morning. The Lord is my shepherd, there's nothing I shall want. Darkness I shall not fear. That's what comes, that's the radical change of getting in touch with the immensity and generous nature of God's love, the mind of God and the generous heart of God. Because our faith and our hope spring and it gives us confidence to listen to that love. In years gone by, if you came to Mass on this Sunday, often you would hear a sermon about joining the priesthood or religious life. It was an image that was often used for the Good Shepherd. And often you'll hear people say today, you know, there's a great shortage. And then I look around this church and I see all these people who are baptized here, baptized in the way that St. Peter spoke about. We're baptized as priest, as prophet, as queen or king. That's what the nature of our baptism is. And so part of our task is to shepherd each other, to care for each other. There's a lovely moment in the musical Le Mis, you might remember it, when Jan is wondering if life was worth living, all the things that have happened that don't seem so good, and all his friends are gone. And then he gets a moment of insight, and he comes to the front of the stage, and he sings, to love another human being is to see the face of God. And it's in that moment that he remembers those who loved him and those he loved. And it was in those moments that he became aware of the power and the depth of God's love. Because the face of God is revealed to us so often in the care and the love of others. I often think the most powerful sacrament we have is the sacrament of the cup of tea. You know when somebody arrives at your door, one of your friends, and says, I'm in a mess, I'm in a bit of a bad way, and often you'll just say, well, come in. And then you say, I'll put the kettle on. Will you have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee? And you listen. Often we don't have any answers, but we listen and we're there. And through that gift of being present to them, there's a kind of a healing or a calmness or a peace at least comes for a while. That's what the effect that Peter was talking about this morning. They were cut to the heart and they said, you know what, we really do have to care for each other. We really have to walk together in faith. We have to live together in love. And we have to rest gently with hope in the hand of the God who loves us. That's what living life to the full is the safety and security, but also the challenge of living safely in the hand of God. You can take a risk sometimes to do that. For the grace to take that risk, we pray in our Mass today.
So we stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was, became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and Son is adored and glorified, and who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So we pray our prayers of the faithful Lord gathered in faith. We bring our prayers and petitions before you. We pray for Pope Francis. May the Lord protect him on his visit to Hungary, keep him strong in mind and heart and body. Lord, hear us. We remember all those who were ill at this time. We pray that all life, which is a gift from God, may be restored to health. Lord, hear us. We pray for peace at the moment in our troubled world, especially in Sudan and Ukraine. Lord, hear us. We pray for all those who are burdened by worries and anxiety. May they feel the presence of God in their lives and seek help when they need it. Lord, hear us. We remember our faithful departed. In particular today, we pray for Mary Gibbons of Lewisburg, the father, mother of Father Richard here. We pray for Thomas, Tommy Joe Byrne from Clontariff, Kevin McMorrow and Kevin Reap, former members of Carja Widda, and Sister Kathleen McGlynn, the sister of Sister Mary in the Carmelite convent here. All of those who died during the week, all of our family and friends, may they rest in the loving peace of God. Lord, hear us. In our own hearts, we make our silent prayers. And with Mary, our mother, we pray, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We make these prayers with confidence through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we have our collection, which is taken up to defray the expenses. We thank you for your constant generosity.
Pray, my friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Easter mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the be cause of our unending joy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. By rising, restored our life. They were overcome with Easter joy every land Every people exults in your praise. Even the heavenly powers with the angelic host, they sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. We proclaim in song the mystery of our faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Francis, our bishop, and all those who minister to your people. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Confident in God's abiding love for each of us, we pray, Our Father. We be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We wave a sign of peace to each other. Peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring all of us to everlasting life. Amen. solidarity with those who cannot be at Mass today, those who are joining us online, we pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. We invite you to come forward through the center aisles and back by the sides. And uh, if people need a Celia Coast, if they'd let us know.
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the presence, by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. If you have any items you might like blessed at this time, if you hold them, we'll bless them. Almighty Father, bless these medals and religious objects. May the saving presence of Christ be in the hearts of those who use them and the homes in which they are placed. I bless them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You take a copy of the parish newsletter with you. You'll find what's happening here, or also on the website at knockshrine.ie. Hope the rest of the weekend is a good one for you. If you're traveling, have a safe and blessed journey. And in the meantime, may the Lord watch over all of us and protect us, and may the Good Shepherd send his blessing upon us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>